Hey everybody, I'm Reality Rick and welcome to Geek Frustrations. So today we're going to install Java. Now when I went to school, the teacher told us that Java was on the computers at school and we were free to use that. Or it was a free download, just go home and download it, it's easy. When I went home and downloaded it, it was not that easy. Things have changed a little bit now. Uh, we will need three pieces of software, a Java development kit, a Java runtime environment, and an integrated development environment. Uh, fortunately now, the Java development kit, the JDK, and the Java runtime environment, JRE, are integrated into one package. So we are actually gonna download two pieces and uh, they pretty much plug themselves together and work for us. So there's not too much involved with setup anymore, which is very nice. So without further ado, let's get started. First, I'm going to download my Java development kit. I'm going to Google and I'm going to type JDK. And it's going to be my first hit. Now this is coming up with a whole list of uh, different versions. Uh, this is April of 2015 and the current most updated version is uh, Java version 8U45. Um, so we are going to start with the Java development kit. The Java runtime environment will come included already. We don't need to worry about that. Okay, so first thing we need to do is accept the license agreement, or it won't let us download anything. And I'm going to go to the last one on the list. I am running a Windows 64-bit system. And the way that you can tell uh, if you're running 64 or 32 bits is if you go to your Start menu, right-click on Computer, Properties, and right here, 64-bit operating system. So we're going to match that, and we are going to get the Windows X64 to executable. Okay, so this takes a minute to download. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we're getting here. First thing we're getting is the uh, Java development kit, and this is going to include our compiler. Uh, and what a compiler does is it's going to turn what we type, stuff that's semi-readable by humans. Uh, it's a little bit difficult, but uh, there's enough letters and characters in there that we can get an idea of what's going on. And it's going to turn that into binary, something that the computer understands. The computer is very picky. It only understands ones and zeros. Now, the beautiful thing about Java is it is compatible with so many different devices. Uh, you've got your Blackberries, your cell phones, your IBM computers, Apple computers. It works on all of them. So this is uh, an extremely powerful development kit that we're downloading. The other thing that we're getting is a Java runtime environment. And what this is going to do is it's going to set up a place for our code to run. Now, in the case of a Java applet, this is deployable as we can send it out. Uh, on the internet and people are not going to want to download code that can run around on your computer and do anything it wants. So what Java has done is it set up what they call a sandbox, a safe little place to play. The code cannot get outside of that sandbox. The runtime environment is going to simulate that so that we can test your code and make sure that it's working properly. Okay, so the download is now complete. We're going to go in and give that a run. Okay, we're going to accept what it's doing here. You can see that it's giving us the development tools. This is for debugging and for writing code and the uh, Java runtime environment. So both are included with this. It's very nice. Okay, so it's asking me where 
uh, I want it to go and uh, this location here program files Java is uh, fine by me I know I'll be able to find it there okay so we're successfully installed and uh, next I can take us to tutorials and tell us all about it uh, I'm gonna skip that and I'm gonna show you the integrated development environment there's another very popular one called Eclipse it will also do the job well uh, I am just used to JGraphs so that's the one that I'm going to go to Oops, we're under images. Okay, so JGrasp Home. In the top left hand corner here, we have download. And this information is just for a survey, so they can get an idea as to who's using their software. It's not required, you do not have to fill out any of this. And we have JGraph 2.0.1 and 2.0.2. Um, this one is an alpha. This one is tried and true. We all know it's going to work. So I'm going to stick with the one that I can rely on. This is a much smaller program. It downloads very quickly. We'll give that a run. Click next to continue. The license agreement, I agree. As you can see, I already have a desktop shortcut, so I'm going to leave that. And next. And again, it's picking a place to go. Uh, I'm going to go with what it suggests. And where in the start menu it's going to show up, I'm just going to let it pick one. Now, these are all the different kind of files that your IDE is going to read and understand. The interesting thing is of all the things that your Java development kit does, compiling code, giving runtime environments, debugging, does not actually give you a place to type what you want. And These are all the different kinds of files that your editor is going to understand. Currently I do not have any other programming languages on the computer or development environments so I'm just gonna let it read them all next time I download a language I'm gonna have to be a little bit more picky and decide which one is gonna run in the new language and which one is gonna run in Java for now I'll just pick everything okay so we're finished very quick Okay, so let's go ahead and open up JGraph and see what we've got. So this is just a blank screen where we can type. Currently we have no files open. <clears throat> and there's no Java files on the computer yet. I'm testing to see if everything is connected properly. So we're going to go to a new Java file. And I'm going to type this out. Okay, so this is a little bit of a complicated piece of code. Uh, you can copy and paste this. Um, it's, I'm not going to teach programming just yet. There's a lot involved here and I want you to understand every detail of what's happening. So I'm going to explain this in the future videos. So first thing we're going to do is compile this. It's going to give us an error, but it'll be good to see how all of this works. This command requires a, a named file. Should we save it? Yes. Now this file must have the same name as our first object. So we call it jhello and they were nice enough to default for us but if you change this it's going to cause errors. So we'll just go ahead and save it into the documents folder. Now you'll notice it created two files for us, a Java file and a class file. This Java file is just the stuff that we've typed out. It's a text file like this, and a class file is going to be more like your ones and zeros of what the computer can run. 
So now I'm going to compile this. And this nice soft blue color. Uh, there's no uh, black or red writing, which means there's no errors that have come up. And operation is complete, so it is ready to go. So we're going to go here under the build menu. And we're going to run as an applet. Doesn't appear to be an applet, but we're going to continue anyways. Okay, so you can see here it's created our little container, our box, our sandbox is on the computer. Code cannot get out of that sandbox, but it can run and play nice inside. So this is our applet, and it comes from our hello class, and here is our hello world label. From this, we can see that what we've typed into our IDE, our integrated development environment, has gone into our Java development kit. It is compiled into the ones and zeros, and from there it's gone into our Java runtime environment, and it is running here. So everything connects nicely. We are now set up to start running code and start discussing how the computer programming works. In our next video, we're going to take a brief introduction into how all of this code goes together and how computers remember information. Catch you later.